Low-income residents and communities of color in the U.S. face much higher and more dangerous heat extremes than people living in richer and whiter neighborhoods. Those are the findings of a new study at the UC San Diego School of Global Policy and Strategy. And the paper comes amid record-setting heat that we're seeing in the western part of the U.S. that shows how climate change is only worsening already dangerous temperature extremes. Joining me now is one of the authors of that study, Professor Jennifer Bernie. Professor, thanks so much for being with us. Um, I went Went through the report and and found some highlights I wanted to discuss with you because it right now it seems like uh, two people living in the same city are experiencing wildly different heat waves um, from from minute to minute. Can you explain in what way? Sure. Uh, first, thank you for having me. Uh, so. I think it's first important to recognize that just the way we change the cover, the surface cover of the earth when we make a city uh, changes the way that um, sunlight interacts with the surface of the earth. And that typically creates heating within cities compared to, for example, the rural surroundings. So urban heating is, is nothing new. Um, but in this study, we looked across the United States um, at uh, very local differences in urban heating. and what we see is that um, in more than 70% of counties that have um, you know, a sizable number of people, um, this disparity where lower income and um, typically minoritized groups are experiencing more of this urban heating. And it's really because of the structure of our cities. Um, they are more built up areas, they're higher density, there's less access to green space in those neighborhoods. And are they things like some people can afford air conditioning and some cannot. Some people can drive to work while others may have to walk in the heat or take very hot mass transit. Does that play into all of this? I think you're absolutely right when it comes to who has access to strategies for dealing with urban heating. That's absolutely right. There's disparities in and how we each might be able to sort of handle this problem. Um, but even just at the baseline of who is having hotter temperatures, that is really um, governed by the structure of, of our urban um, building itself. You know, as we sort of retake a look at infrastructure in this country at this point in time with the Biden administration infrastructure proposal still working its way through Congress, how might policymakers address these issues in our cities, especially given the fact that climate change is only expected to uh, influence and worsen these heat waves in the coming years? It's an excellent question. Um, so two things I think you raised this earlier um, is recognizing that this isn't just um, an income issue. This isn't just that um, wealthier households are able to kind of buy access to amenities and cooler city temperatures. Even in this study, when we control for incomes, we still see these race, race and eth ethnicity disparities. And so we really need to recognize that this is something that has been persistent across regions with very different histories and geographies and demographics. Um, urban policy has, has um, sort of favored wealthier uh, and white communities. So I'm really interested to hear what the administration puts forward in this regard, but we, we really need to stop thinking of urban, um, uh, you know, a, a livable urban and urban environment as a, as a luxury good. Mm -hmm, absolutely. What were some other uh, highlights that you wanted to pull out from the report that were, that you think would be especially important, even for lawmakers uh, to get a look at? Yeah, a couple of findings uh, that stood out. So first, we looked really across the whole United States. So this isn't just driven by bigger, older cities. It isn't just driven by cities that, for example, historically had um, um, a lot of redlining. It's really everywhere. It's even in more rural um, counties with, with fewer inhabitants. Uh, you still see these uh, gradients. So it really is, I think, a, a sign of our pervasive sort of urban planning um, mindset historically that, that does need to change. Um, a second thing that popped out is that even in places, um, I'm here in the American Southwest, this is a region that typically has some urban cooling. Our, our cities, because they have more vegetation than the desert surroundings, um, get a little bit of um, evaporative cooling that way and tend to be a little cooler than the surroundings. Even in places with urban cooling, 
um, lower income and uh, neighborhoods and neighborhoods with uh, higher proportions of minoritized communities uh, have less of that urban cooling. So even in places where um, this relationship goes the opposite, we're still seeing this bias. Are you talking about also cooling centers that, you know, at the at the very local level that um, municipalities could actually help by having these centers? I know in New York City, we have them when we're experiencing heat waves or people who maybe don't have air conditioning can go to those cooling centers. Is it is it things like that that are going to help? Yeah, I think that um, we need to think about this in a very immediate term. Uh, right. And so. Um, uh, things like having cooling centers and recognizing who needs access to those cooling centers, right? If it's lower income communities, um, if it's uh, neighborhoods with higher minority populations, we need to remember that those are the folks that, that might need also help accessing cooling centers. But yes, things like cooling centers um, and outreach in the very short term are gonna be critical. And then in the longer term, we need to really rethink um, where we're investing in cities and where we're developing and, and where we're prioritizing green space. And what would your message be to lawmakers in particular when it comes to climate change after co-authoring a study with these kinds of findings? Yeah, I, I guess what I would say is that this urban heat burden is really right just the difference in a city compared to the surroundings. That's actually independent of climate change. It's this is this added temperature boost that cities create. Um, and so this is only going to get worse with climate change, right? So whatever happens sort of at baseline, these cities are cities feel this added burden. And so, um, you know, we're pushing people more towards dangerous heat exposure um, with this urban bump on top of climate change that really is only only going to get worse. Yeah, lots to consider there. Professor Jennifer Burney of UC San Diego, thanks for being with us today.